Today we're gonna do some occluded dot shooting. I've got occlusion on my dot. Um, it's especially interesting for me because uh, I've only actually got one eye and I can still shoot occluded. What we're gonna use it for is to benefit your mechanics and, and increase your speed and accuracy with red dot shooting by forcing the target focus. Today, we are looking at red dot pistol shooting and exploring the concept of how do I acquire my red dot faster? It's a common problem that you see with new red dot shooters. And today, Mike Pannone is gonna give you what I believe might be a good hack that you guys can incorporate into your training to acquire your dot faster. We are doing this at our first ever Patreon-only class here in Utah. So it's pretty freaking sweet. We're hanging out on with the class. Now we're gonna go into the component side of the component skill side. First thing we're gonna do is shoot doubles. That's two shots as rapidly as you can place them in a specified area. Just hold the gun, get a perfect grip. What you're doing is evaluating your ability to rapidly press the trigger to the rear and manage your grip, okay? What you will see, especially since everybody here has a red dot, is if you start to look at the dot, all right, your vision will be pulled wherever the dot goes, okay? If I look at the dot, the dot pulls my vision where it's going. If I look at the target, my vision pulls the dot to the target, okay? That's the concept behind it. What, that, what this will lead into is dot occlusion. Now, I will have a difficult time doing it with precision because I only have one functioning eye, but I'll still occlude a dot and I'll show you, I can still shoot with that, okay? I have, a little, I have to tweak it a little bit, but what, what you get from an occluded dot is you remove the, the genuine ability to stare at the dot because you have, you have a dot and one eye looking at a dot with a black background, and then you have another eye looking at the target, okay? As long as you keep your focus on the target, which makes sense because you wouldn't look at something a foot away, you know, in a little tube, you will see that there's originally a occluded eye gun sight. There was a sight, it was a sight point was the first one they used on the Sante prison raid. They've had occluded eye gun sights for years, Armson had them and all the rest. What you're doing is superimposing the two images. One image sees the target, one image sees the dot, and they put them together. That's how dot occlusion works, okay? What it does as a training tool is it, it teaches you or it, it helps you reinforce target focus. That's gonna be crucial with these. And again, I'll do it with a, with an occluded dot, okay? It will be difficult for me because I only have one eye, so I'll put the dot in the bottom of the window, but I can still do it. So with both your eyes, you, you'll have no problem and you'll realize how beneficial it is. Now, I know a couple cops in uh, Texas, one of my buddy Brandon from TTPOA, he leaves his dot occluded all the time. So that if, he, if he's got to deal with something and he's looking into the sun, his dot never washes out. He just becomes accustomed to it. So I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I'm saying that I know guys that, that use it as a training tool. I know guys that use it as an operational tool and it came from a, an operational piece of kit, uh, you know, a, a, a site point site that was on the Sante prison raid initially. So quick thank you to Segar Gear for sponsoring the video today. They make the belts that we wear. I'm rocking the emissary right now. Chris is rocking the battle belt. As you can see over there, he's jabbing his goss, jaws somewhere over there with his battle wagon on. But um, there's a code you guys can plug in. Great belts. We've, we'll have a couple of videos uh, that we've done prior, link below. Uh, it's 1911 Syndicate, it's all lowercase, no spaces. Saves you 10% off the store there. Check them out. Back on with the video. Who has, who has a something that I've never shot before? Who's got something with a stock trigger? Okay, I'll shoot a stock trigger PDP, if you don't mind. I'm only gonna shoot a couple rounds. All right, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I don't, I have no idea what this, what the trigger's like or anything like that. All I'm gonna do is um, when I hear the timer, I'm gonna just slap the trigger, okay? And we'll see where it prints on paper. So we're at, where are we at right now? We are a little bit, a little bit over 10. I'll start at 10. All right, 26, 27, 23, 18, 19, 20. There's a couple of mistakes that I made on that. And that's just based on my, my expectation of a gun discharging at a certain time for timing. Like I, I, have a, I have a feeling that the gun is gonna do something that it didn't do. That's on me, that's my fault. The bottom line is I'm well in the 20s, okay? I know I've got two on either side because I came off the gun, but otherwise, when I'm not, when I'm not, once I get to know the trigger, that's what I'm shooting, okay? 20s and less, these are me figuring out what the, like, what the gun is, completely different gun with different trigger. That's on me, that's not on, on the gun. Once I know what the gun does, this is what, what I'm doing in 20 or less. Okay, I'm just staring at the target, slapping the trigger as hard as I can. That's all, okay? So again, it's not, there's no magic to it. And the reason that I do it, I don't do it with my gun, I do it with somebody else's gun, a gun that I don't, that I don't know of or shot, or I don't own a PDP, is for me to figure that out. Like, okay, I need to settle down on the gun. I figure out things when I make mistakes, to get from you know a couple here and there, like two there and there, that's just trigger. That's that's me rotating, incrementally increasing grip tension. I'm going like this, 
Okay, that one was me coming off the gun. I remember that one. The rest of them are all center axis, a little high, a little low. I don't care. I'm just staring at the middle of the target. I'm target focused and I'm just slapping the trigger. We talk about target focus, we talk about trigger manipulation. The trigger is not... The trigger is not a hard, uh, difficult thing to press, but it's difficult to press it rapidly without using any other muscles, just using this, okay? So then we're gonna work on doubles. We'll start out going, going slow and just keep picking up the pace until you're shooting 20 or better splits, okay? We're gonna start that right at 10 yards. I'm gonna go slow and then I'll just start picking up the pace on the doubles until it starts to get, get fudgy, okay? So I'm staring at the dot, right? Ah. When I start trying to go fast is when I shank stuff, okay? When I just relax and press the trigger, I don't try to do anything but move my trigger finger, all of a sudden it tightens right back up. Those are all gonna be sub, the ones where I actually wasn't being stupid, those are all sub 20 splits and they're on the A zone at like 10-ish. So that's what we want. We want, I want you to mess with it and figure out the mistakes you make. My mistake, loosen up my grip, too much input on the gun. Once I remedy it, I have no problem. But you, you, when, you're, when you're doing this, that's the exploratory part. Get out there at this distance and start start pushing a little bit. Go slow, go fast. Figure out when it breaks apart, what it does, and then remedy that. And you saw me do it right there. Threw a couple, remedied it. My, my splits were actually faster and more accurate once I settled down on the gun. That's what it is. It's a never ending journey. I shanked what, three? I shanked two, okay? I shanked two, okay? And that one's still an A, but I consider that a shank. That wasn't where it was supposed to go. That's where my double should be. Come on down, come on down. When I shot, when I shot that demo, I threw two right here, okay? That was my fault. That was me putting input on the gun. That one is still an A zone by the letter of the law. It's bullshit, I shanked that two. So I had three. When I stopped doing dumb shit, my doubles are sub 20 splits and they're in the center, okay? but you gotta be willing to, to, to throw some stuff. You, you're not gonna shoot perfect, I don't want you, if you're shooting a perfect target, okay, you should be shooting a lot faster. If you're shooting faster and you only drop, I'd go faster than this. I can push my splits, I should be heading towards 14s, okay? I should be pushing harder, okay? Don't, don't worry about missing the target when you're training. If you don't miss the target, okay, while you're training, I'm not saying to try and miss the friggin' target, I'm saying if you don't miss the target, it means you're not pushing yourself. Tape everything up, let's start again push as fast as you can and figure out how you're going to isolate that trigger finger because that's, that's where the mistakes are made when you can't isolate your trigger finger, all right? Let's paste up. Let's do one more magazine, okay? Just push it, push yourself. Redefine what fast feels like, okay? What, it feel, what, is, what is fast to you? I don't know, as fast as you could possibly do it. The only thing you want you to remember is relaxation. Like I said, the two that I pushed and the one that was low still in the A but low, those were tension. Okay, those were tension. I was tense on the gun. When I relax on the gun, I'm just looking and hitting the trigger as fast as I can, like I said, sub 20 splits, and I'm putting them in the center of the target. They're a little high, a little low, the way the gun recoils. Okay, if it's completely settled or not, what I'm concerned with is left and right. When I'm over here, or I'm way down here, I'm doing something wrong. As long as I'm centered up and down, I'll take that. Okay, those are good solid eight hits. All right, let's head down, take a look. Good. You're getting on it too, you're, 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 you're getting saucy. What happened, do you even remember that? Yeah, I pushed it. I just wanted a little, little saucier. And... Little, little, little extra sauce. Yeah. Okay. You pick that up. Yeah, I'll speed it up. Yeah, speed it up. If it's too clean, there you go. That's good. You got more giddy up than that. Yeah, I did. I did. Good. Good. Push it. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Is that? Do you think is that you following the dot, like catching the dot in your vision and tracking it, or do you know? Yeah, I, I was pushing pace beyond my comfort level. Oh, good then. Um, and that's fucking great. And and all my off hits have been high. No, yeah. like nothing's dropping low. So I think I, it's boom, 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 yeah. boom. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, when I when I have too much tension, as I break, as I go to break that second shot, my whole body, I do the same thing except over there. I start mm -hmm. pushing into it. Yeah. It's either that or it's, I see the, I fire a shot and I see, oh, look at the dot. Ah. And I, you know. And I'm a lefty, so. Yep, exactly. Sense, you know? you're, the, you're just a mirror image. If you are looking for any other ways to support the channel, one, 
we would freaking love that. Um, Patreon obviously is a great place to be because you get to do cool stuff like this. You fly to Utah, we hang out. We got bourbon tastings tonight. We got, we got barbecue, we got kind of a catered barbecue thing going on. It's gonna be really cool. Um, so check out Patreon, a bunch of other things besides the classes that happen on Patreon. And then if you guys need real estate help, just go to 1911syndicate.com. We work pretty much all over the U.S., including Alaska, which is debatably the U.S., but we've helped people in Alaska and Florida and Utah and Texas and wherever. So check that out on with the video. Next next thing we're going to talk about um, is dot occlusion. The benefits of dot occlusion will do some of it. <clears throat> the goal is to occlude to cover up the front of the of the uh, optic. So you can see the red dot in the, in the rear of it. You look through the glass, you see a red dot and there's tape in front. We've got masking tape, we'll do it with masking tape. The intention of it is to force you to target focus. It is a really great way to retrain your eyes to have your, your non-dominant eye looking at the target and your dominant eye sees the dot. Your, your brain will superimpose the images. Um, some people will say that they, that, that they have a problem doing it because of their vision. I only have one eye. Okay, well I have two eyes, but one of them's, one of them's that, okay? So um, I can still do this with one eye. What I'm doing is I'm putting the dot at the top of the window, okay? I've got my, my dot occluded. I put the dot at the top of the window below my line of vision, and I'm going to be low, but I can still deliver, okay? So what I'm going to do is back up a little bit. Again, I can't, I have to look over at the target. In my periphery, I can see the dot. and I see a black dot on top of here, and in the bottom, I see in, in the periphery of my vision of my one eye, I see a red dot. Okay, so let's see what we got. Okay, so with the occlusion, what I have is low center. Okay, I'm a little low center because I'm looking. Remember, I said I'm looking at the dot and the, the optic is actually below me. So that's, that's pretty legit. And here's the double one I just shot target to target. Okay, in my periphery, I see a dot. I'm not even, I'm not focusing on it whatsoever. I know it's there because I see a little red thing and I just send it and there's my pair that I shot. Okay, it works and I don't even have two friggin' eyes. Okay, if you got two eyes, this will be money for you. It'll, it'll, if nothing else, it will teach your vision, teach your brain to put the images together in a comfortable manner. And then you could, then you could super target focus and it'll be burning it down. All right, see the point? It's, it could be a shooting aid if you've got weather issues, like lighting issues. It can be a training aid if you have problems getting your, your, uh, your vision to, um, to superimpose those images. And it's just a, a better way to understand target focus. When you truly target focus, as soon as you occlude that dot and you target focus with effect, you'll go, oh, that's target focus. Until then, you don't know. Okay? You don't know. You really don't. You understand it theoretically, but not, not, not in, in real time. All right, gents? All right, let's do this. I just shot heads over there with my occluded dot. They're all gonna be low. They're about that far low because I gotta look over the top. But this target right in front of me, that's my group with one eye using an occluded dot. Now I'm gonna shoot doubles with an occluded dot with only one eye. You guys, you damn well better be, do, be able to do better than me. So guns out. Okay, let's take a look. You watch me do it. That's me shooting heads at a, at a reasonable pace. I'm not going bullseye because it doesn't matter because my dot's occluded. That's me shooting doubles, okay? I'm a little bit low center. One center axis, but it's low. You, you guys, I'm telling you, the key is target focus, yeah. okay? I kind of see the dot in the bottom of the window. You can use my gun and look at it like or you, with your gun. Put the dot right, in, I put the dot right in the bottom. That's all I can see. The second shot is already breaking just as the dot kind of kind of dips in and goes back up to the top of the window. It's not, gents, you can do it. You just gotta, you gotta trust it, put the, put the spurs to it, go faster, okay? Focus hard on that target, I'm staring at that dot, and it's the dot, the, I'm staring at the dot, and my, the top of my sight is here, and my red dot's right about there, and that's where my doubles are.
I just want to use this because I bought it at Amazon. All right, line's cold. Let's go ahead and paste them, paste everything up. Now the next thing we're going to do is pair up. We want the targets, one target width apart. So the two on the end should be about a yard apart, edge to edge. The next two, a yard apart, edge to edge. Okay, grab the center of the base and move it over so it's about a yard. No, center of the base. That's not the center of the base. That's the center of the base. Over here, left. There you go, one yard apart, good. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna add in the draw and we are going to add in multiple targets with occlusion. Now, you're, what, what, we're, what are we doing? We're adding a draw in, okay? We're doing doubles. We're doing a target transition and we're doing an occluded, okay? So adding a lot of parts in. It, like I said, if I can do it, with an occluded dot with only one eye, you guys be able to burn it down. So again, driving the gun up. Oh, push down the last one. Okay. I literally can't see anything except the dot in the bottom of my window bouncing around. It's, it's down here while I'm looking there. And I'm still, I think, at three out. For the most part, that's that's a center line. It's me not seeing the dot. That was just me being a dumbass. And here, my hits are good. I'm not letting the gun settle. Again, I can barely see the dot. I can barely see it. It's in the bottom. I'm looking over here and it's down here, but I still know it's on the target-ish and I send it with one eye. With two eyes, I'm telling you, it should be really easy because now you get to have the dot centered in the window and you get to be looking at this with a dot that is superimposed in your vision. Okay. Again, I do it with the deficit that I have just because it can still be done effectively. And now when you, when you do it with two eyes, it should be a freaking layup. All right, let's do it. Yeah, if you've got a giant hole in the middle of your target, just leave it because we're gonna we're gonna put new targets up anyway. So we want now we're just looking for ease of of target maintenance. Line's hot. Line's hot. Draw and pairs. Line's cold, guys. Hey guys, come on in real quick. This is, I'm, I'm learning along with you. I'm figuring things out along with you, with the occlusion, because it's, it's new for me in the sense that I, I, I only have one eye and I, I just was like, oh, I can't do that because it's occluded. And that's, and that's a bullshit dodge excuse because you can do whatever the fuck you want to do if you decide to do it. So now we we'll look at my doubles. That's a magazine shooting two on two, draw two on two with this. With that right there, okay? So what did I learn? Okay, <clears throat> what did I learn? Um, one, excuses only satisfy those who make them, so enough of the excuse machine. And two, the, the vision piece, as long as I can perceive the dot, I know the dot's down here, I can make it be where I want it to be by looking where I want it to go. Does everybody get that? Okay? It's not, it's not the, the, the occlusion for me is only detrimental when I get far back because then there's a big difference in what I can see and where the dot is and all that. Then it becomes problematic. Then I have to actually look through the back and have the entire hood covering the target, understanding that it's gonna be in the center. It makes different. But at these shorter distances, it makes, it makes no difference. I'm shooting the same speeds that I normally shoot and I'm shooting good, clean targets. Okay, so again, the, the occlusion piece, what it forces you to do if you're gonna do it properly is target focus, okay? What I learned is that as long as I can perceive the dot, I look where I want it to go and the dot will go there, okay? What I notice is as I drive the dot there, I see where I want the bullets to go and then I see the dot go there, I just hit the trigger twice and exactly what I expect to happen happens is what? It's just below the dot, okay? It's just below the dot because what? It's at the top of the window at the bottom of my vision. Now it's predictable, now I can manage it, okay? And that's with, it, with a what would be considered a deficit, okay? So think about what, what you're learning from that. That's what I learned from this, okay? It's so pronounced, the vision driving it. It is so pronounced. You've got, that's the, the benefit of this tool in training is that it forces you to stare at the target, okay? Force you to stare at the target and just, you gotta trust it. Like I was just trusting, I was just, I was just banging away and I'm like, wow, okay, now I, now I understand what I'm doing. That's what I want you to figure out when, with both eyes, 
okay? What are you doing that's either succeeding and replicate it or that's failing and omit it? It's basically like a magazine and a half at seven shooting as fast as I can shoot and see the target properly. With all those shots, I've got one Charlie on this target. I've got one Charlie and a letter of the law A, but I consider it a Charlie. So I got two Charlies on one and one Charlie on the other. Occlusion, it works as a training tool and it's effective even if you only got one eye. And a final thank you to today's other video sponsor, FLP Firearms Legal Protection. There's a code you guys can plug in, it's 1911. It saves you about a third off the different services there. If you CCW a gun or if you have a firearm in your home or a tomahawk in your truck and you wind up in a legally justified self-defense scenario, they will cover you unlimited attorney fees. You got the attorney hotline, which is nice because when you call, you don't talk to like a customer service rep, you actually get an attorney on the other end of the line. There's a couple different plans, whether it's just you or if you have family or if you travel or stay in your state. So we'll have that linked below, check it out. Thanks to those guys. We'll see you next time.